Good morning and welcome to Brave Church Online. We're so excited you decided to join us this morning for church. Whether you're worshiping in your kitchen or in your living room like us, we just want to say welcome to Brave. If it's your first time joining us, we're so grateful that you've chosen Brave for this Sunday morning. We'd love to connect with you. There's a link that you can click on to fill out a digital connection card. If it's your first time filling out that card, we'll be donating $5 on your behalf to Feeding America this week. That's right. Brave Kids Families, this week's lesson was sent to you via email on Friday, and it'll also be uploaded to our Brave Kids Facebook page. If you don't have access to either, please go on Facebook and like our Brave Kids page, or send us a message so that we can email you the content for our Brave Kids. As we head into this time of worship and prayer, we want to challenge you to be intentional. Um, it's been really easy, or I'm sure it's been really easy, it has been for us um, this last couple weeks as we have had church week after week online in the house um, to just become distracted. We have our phones readily available, we have tons of stuff that needs to be done around the house, children that need tending to, um, but there's so much power in corporate worship um, and, and having this time together, we want to challenge you, take some time to be intentional about it. Close your eyes during the next couple of songs um, and thank God for his goodness. Or, or maybe you're walking through some, some challenging trials right now with, with everything that is going on and, and you want to close your eyes and just surrender everything to God and ask for guidance and leadership. Uh, we just want to be intentional about this time of worship and time in the Word. Absolutely. Before we begin worship, please join us in prayer. Dear Gracious Father, we want to thank you for everything you're doing and what you continue to do in our lives, dear Lord. We want to continue to pray for all the essential workers, our medical staff, our firefighters, our delivery men that are out there in the front lines, dear Lord. We want to pray that anyone that's battling anything right now, this, dear Lord, we pray that they surrender it to you this morning. We want to thank you for everything that you're doing and that you continue to do in our lives, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning, Brave Church. Come on, wherever you're at today, why don't you worship with us? Wherever you are, if you're in your living room, car, house, apartment, wherever, why don't you worship with us today? Come on, put your hands together. We sing when night. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling.
amen, amen. Well, hey, church, we're going to sing a new song today. The name, the name of it is Love Won't Give Up. And as we sing it today, I just ask that you close your eyes, that you focus in, that you really lean into what God wants to do in this season, what God wants to do in your life and in your heart today. And just let this song, just let it shower over you as you praise our God, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your love doesn't offer There's nothing I've done That your grace won't cover It's not over Till you say so You are faithful God, you're faithful The cross is all The confidence I need
do, Jesus, we thank you that you're holding us. God, we thank you that no matter how far we run from you, no matter how far we may stray, God, you're always right there meeting us, waiting for us, waiting to love us, waiting to hold us. God, waiting to forgive us, waiting to extend your grace, your love, and your mercy. God, we thank you that your mercy and grace is extended to every home today, God, to every heart today. And we thank you that, God, while we can't be together, God, you're running to each and every single one of us. And you're holding each and every single one of us closer than ever. We love you, we thank you, we praise you, and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty and amazing name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, church, prepare your hearts for the message. Good morning, Brave Church, and happy Sunday to you. This morning, we are going to continue our sermon series called Essential, and I want to do so by talking about essential relationships, except this morning, I want to change things up a little bit. Instead of just talking, you know, at you, um, I want to talk with one of my best friends in the Milwaukee area. Uh, obviously, this is a critical time for staying connected with each other. And so uh, my friend, Pastor Jonathan Strobush of Mixed Church, which is the church that we record in each week, we sat down for a very candid COVID-19 conversation. Sometimes it, it's difficult, if I'm being honest with you, to be uh, not necessarily transparent, but it, it's difficult to figure out how to fit in uh, where I'm at personally, how I am personally processing things uh, within the context of a message that I preach to you. And so we sat down and we just had an open conversation about how we're both processing things, what are some takeaways that, that, that we can gain from this situation, how we're trying to lead our churches, and really how we can continue to move forward in the lives that we're meant to live. I, I think you're going to find this uh, conversation that he and I have uh, enjoyable. I know that we certainly laughed a lot. We probably laughed a little bit too much at times, but I do believe it's going to encourage you. I think it's going to inspire you. I, I think that there's some things that you're really going to gain mostly from what Jonathan says. And so please stay tuned and enjoy this conversation. Hey, hey, well, good, good morning. morning. Brave... I'm, th I'm three. One, two. Hey, good, good morning. morning. Okay, so you go. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> hey, good morning, church. So happy to see you this Sunday. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Strobush. I pastor Mixed Church. Uh, my name is Jake Worth for uh, mixers out there. Is, it, <laughs> is that a thing? Yes, mixers. Okay. Uh, I pastor a church called Brave Church on the western side of Milwaukee. We call him the shepherd of the West. And we call him the shepherd of these. We, as in myself. <laughs> <laughs> the plural. The royal we. The royal we. <laughs> Just so you know, we're going to have probably too much fun We hope today. that it transfers through the, the camera. Onto uh, your couch. Well, through onto your computer screen and that you sense yes. it on your yes. couch. Yes. Uh. <laughs> uh, Jake, why don't you tell everybody about the first time we met. Absolutely. A little bit of context. So uh, my wife, Jackie, and I, we moved to Milwaukee area in 2018, January, to start Brave Church later that fall. And you were, uh, I think, one of the first people that reached out to me from the area. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly don't know. Our mutual friend, Nick Hallman, probably. Yep. Shout out Puma. Yeah. <laughs> connected us. Uh, he didn't tell me that's what his nickname is. So I feel, <laughs> le feel left out. Um, but uh, you reached out and just wanted to hear what we were up to. Mm -hmm. And we met at Anodyne, the big one in Walker's Point. Mm -hmm. And uh, 45 minute conversation turned into a lifetime friendship. Yes. <laughs> Jake is a good friend of mine. Best friends, <laughs> wouldn't you say, John? We haven't defined it. Yet. Okay, we haven't defined it yet. Always clear, clear boundaries in relationships. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. That's Anyways, funny. yes, it's you're, a good time. Yeah, you're gonna open up with the first question. <laughs> I think that's what we talked about in this very candid conversation that we're having. <laughs> I literally just asked you the first question. 
Yes, you did. And now I'm going to take it to question two. Uh, so, hey, kind of the whole reason why we're talking right now is because of this very unique season that we are all experiencing at the same time. Yes. And so, um, ironically enough, you and I were together as this kind of all unfolded. We were what, working the together. New, that coffee shop that you introduced me to, what was it called? Uh, uh, right on the lakefront. It's really cool. Doesn't matter for our, our conversation, but now I'm really trying to figure it out. And we were working together on our messages when all of a sudden the reality hit. This was a Thursday, yep. I believe. Yep. The reality hit. We may not have church this weekend. <laughs> yeah. We were uh, we were just starting to talk about yeah. the reality that we might not have church. Yes. Right. And um and so we talked about that. And then we ended up both canceling church. Yeah, and then we ended up going out to, to brunch, brunch with each other. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so I remember how where I was. I mean, for <clears throat> me, like that weekend, it was like, yes, certainly sad that we were uh, canceling church. Still kind of confused about yep, COVID-19, yep. not really sure, you know, how drastic things were going to be. Yep. On one part, it was like, this is kind of nice going out to brunch with my best friend yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and his family. See, we're pastors. We don't really get to ever go out to yeah, yeah, Sunday yeah. brunch. And so, and then obviously Monday morning we woke up and it was like, okay, no, this is actually not cool. Mm -hmm. This is pretty serious. Take us through that first kind of official week of quarantine. This would have probably been the week before the stay before at home. Before we had stay at home orders. Order, but everyone was pretty much this, kind of yeah, battling this down was, the head. This was, we had just found out Groups, gatherings of less than 250 people. Yes. No go. Yep. And so uh, I remember that was an interesting day for our staff. We, we, we had our staff meeting that day um, wrestling with, you know, one, what are we going to do? Right. Because um, I think, you know, four weeks ago, we, didn't, we weren't doing this. We right, right. We were shooting yeah. video. You weren't shooting video content. Yeah. Um, and, and so how are we going to adapt and, 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 and all of that? But I think also the confusion for me was nobody really knows yeah. what really is going gonna, is gonna to come and it's going to happen. And so I think we were planning, um, and I still feel this a little bit, week by week. Yeah, yeah right? right. Um, and so you, you kind of feel that... Uh, like, ah, oh, this will pass, and, right. and we'll move on from this quickly. And so, you know, I didn't really want to get too invested yeah. in, in setting a rhythm and, and creating uh, a clear structure. And so I yeah, think we were... Four or five weeks ago, no one was thinking that when we canceled no. that first Sunday that we were canceling inevitably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Indefinitely, yeah. rather. And, and Inevitably, now... canceling indefinitely. <laughs> yes, yes. Inev yeah, it yeah. was well said. <laughs> Lyrical genius over here. <laughs> they call him the next Kanye. But West. personally, <laughs> personally, how are you processing it? So, like from a church level, yeah, yeah. you know, you're obviously you're just kind of taking things as we get information, right? Yeah. But personally, how are you level, processing? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you know that before the stay-at-home orders, I just assumed life would be normal. Like right. when we were having brunch there that yeah. day, I was like. This this likely won't be that yeah. unusual. Yep. You know, um, we're not going to be able to gather in in large groups, but we're still going to be able to exist in the world right. as we yep. as we know. It. And so I think it was really normal up until that got taken away. Yeah, and I for think sure. um, I think like we're all finding. Um, and I really love people. Yeah. You know, uh, not that I didn't know that right. before. Questioned it at times. Yeah, but... for sure. <laughs> you know, certain people, you know, we all, you know, we all have that uncle, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, having that taken away from me, uh, I personally, I've been wrestling with like, man, that, that's one of the ways I recharge. I recharge yeah. around yeah. people. Yep. And, and I don't know about you, but when I'm, when I'm working on content and sermons and stuff like that, I exclusively do that in coffee shop environments around people because yeah. I like I I get inspiration being yeah. with that, and around people. Well that's why you invited me to have coffee that first Thursday. You were hitting a wall. <laughs> you was, needed my yeah, inspiration. Totally. Yeah. I'm the exact same way. You're the ghostwriter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the exact same way. Uh I remember talking with Jackie. 
it was either the first Sunday that we canceled church. I think it was, it was likely the second. Like, again, that first Sunday was like, oh, this is kind of a nice surprise. Like, yeah. set up tearing down church is difficult on all levels of ministry. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, this is, this is kind of nice. Then a week into it, it was like, I'm getting rocked here, like you said. Like, my, my tank is not being getting filled with the typical interaction. Yeah, 100%. And it's like, how do we how do we adjust? Like, how did you adjust? Like, what adjustments did you start to make? Or, like, how long did it take till you, like, ad- I mean, have we adapted no, I don't know. No, I don't know. I mean, I just talked about last Sunday in my message that, like, this has been really hard on us. Right. Um, and I think, you know, now it, it, it this might go on for some time. And so I think learning to, uh, you know, I just believe you don't find rhythms. Yeah. You know, uh, you create them. And That's so good. I think finally putting our feet down and, and finding some solid ground and, and just putting yeah. rhythms into place, um, though they might be temporary yeah. and just last for this season, you know, it's, it's really important. I need to say that again. This is for my, my bravers. Not a, <laughs> bravers, <laughs> not a yeah. thing. Um, Bravest. But like you said something really great there, like you don't discover rhythms, you develop them. Yeah, totally. Like it's not, and I think that's huge because I think for me in that first week, it was like, I'm thinking that I'm going to passively adapt Mm -hmm. when you realize, I certainly realized, no, I'm going to have to proactively, like like, I'm going to have to learn how to adapt to a rhythm. Like what did that look like? Any like um, very practical ways that you developed a new rhythm? (laughs) Uh, To be candid... That's By, what this is yeah, about, candid conversations candid. with JJ, uh, but JJ, John, and well, and we're not sure how we're yeah. gonna what well, yeah. we're gonna label this. <laughs> uh, honestly, unanonymous. <laughs> okay, yeah. keep going with it. Uh, Stay a message. Um, uh, uh, really, I think, f- at, in some level, free falling and hitting the bottom. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, you know, makes you realize I need to change this. I think mm-hmm. um, one of the things that helped us. This isn't like a practical thing, but it's helpful to remember everyone else is in this as well. Yeah, you know. So I think Huge. calling you, asking you, hey, how are you yep. wrestling with this? Calling my buddies in Virginia and in Florida and all over, just saying, you know, how are we going to navigate through right. this and stuff like that? Because I think everyone uh, is in this. But what's interesting, what we've been talking about is also everyone's interpreting this. Yeah, yeah, way differently oh all across right. the spectrum, and, yep. and we have this climate right now that's you know politically charged it was all and it was already a politically charged climate yeah, before yeah. COVID-19 and we <laughs> ramped it up <laughs> yeah uh, this all ramped it up and so how are you uh kind of leading brave church leading a church through this kind of season a, with diverse thought and a yeah. diverse church and socioeconomic levels and the whole yep. thing in this yeah. kind of charged environment I mean, so the first thing is, I appreciate the diversity. I know you do. Yes. Mix means together. Together, um, and 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 I mean, that's a huge. Uh, I mean, that's where, like, I think in our relationship, where why we've been able to connect is like, although we may say things differently 100%. to our churches, we're like seriously right on point. Yep. Like, yep. we yep. we believe the church should not necessarily just be diverse, but diversely unified. And so, as I look at our church, and our church, honestly, you know, we're much younger, smaller than your church, but even in a church of a hundred, uh, you know, or so, folks, we're diverse. We've yep. got a lot of different. Uh, interpretations of what's happening, a, yeah. a lot of different political stances. I personally, I I love that. Yeah. I think that the message of Jesus spreads pretty pretty wide, yep. you know. 100%. Um, and yet during this time, you know, you step onto Facebook and you're gonna see, okay, yeah. oh, okay, that's how. You, okay, okay, now you're seeing that. So like for me personally. Um, from a, from a personal standpoint, I'm like, okay, I need to be educated. Like, I need to be in tune with this. Um, and I think I mentioned this to our church in one of the first weeks. It's like, we have to be in tune with what is happening, but be careful that we are not under the influence of what's happening. So I need to turn on the news. I need to read some sure. things because I need to have a pulse. And yet at the same time, I'm not going to go and fall into a three-hour <laughs> wormhole of watching 
yep. you know, mass media, yep. because, you know, and maybe I just speak for myself, that's not going to be healthy for me. Yep. Um, and, and then secondly, like, I've, so I, I've got to figure out how to be in tune, but not under the influence. And then I also think that during this season of life, like, you know, I jokingly said, stay on message. But I think that is a, I think that's a critical point for us Christ followers. 100%. Like we have a main message here. And it's not that we don't care about other things. And it certainly is not that we're not vocal. I'm, I think we have to be vocal mm -hmm. about any and all issues. I think that we certainly should feel free to voice our opinions. But I think the thing that we always have to come back to is, is this in any way going to damage my main message? Yep. Like, if my main message is Jesus, it, so, you know, what did Jesus say? Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Okay, so that's, that's my message. I'm staying on message. Okay, now I'm figuring out, all right, how am I staying on message yeah. while also communicating um, in a relevant way to the issues that are happening right here and right now? What about you? seasoned veteran <laughs> yeah. pastor. John, so just a little bit of context. John is the younger brother that I've always looked up to. Because <laughs> you are technically, well you are technically well younger than me, and yet you have experienced most of life before me. You have three children, yeah. all over the age of six. I am having... At the point of that, this video may have had. <laughs> my, you might have a baby right now. I might have a baby right now. A uh, little Skywalker Junior. Um, you joke about that enough that I think that that's the actual name. No, of the baby. no. We uh, we had a, a very serious Joe conversation. Ash, right? <laughs> we had a very serious <laughs> conversation the other night where she wanted to make sure that she, I knew that Skywalker was not a okay. An option. Okay, yeah, yeah. so. So how have you been navigating that with how to lead? It's like, how do you lead not necessarily down the middle, but I, yeah. And I think this is the, this is, this is part of being a Christian is we always hold our life in the middle of attention. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not while well, I'm seeking only wisdom, you know, and I'm not operating just in faith. Yeah. You know, I'm like, there's a balance between wisdom yeah. and faith. You know, it's I'm grace not, and truth, yeah, right? Totally, yeah. 100%. It's not just, Both you know, hand. this doesn't exist. We need to believe in faith. Yeah. This isn't a real thing. We're just going to go out, you know? Yeah. You know, like, we need to be those who who follow the orders and right. are respectful of our leaders yeah. that, 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 like, God has sovereignly put in place yeah. to lead and um, and at the same time not be given to fear and, yeah. and, and, and walk in faith. And, and so... Uh, I think we've been leading in the tension, you know, yeah. leaning into the middle, yeah. right? Um, not that the middle is a is an absence of of listening, right? But I think yeah. I think uh, in a way, when you stand in the middle, you can hear clearer from both sides. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, just, just preach. You know, we got That's an ear on this side. We got an ear on this side. About to be a conversation, side. but go on, <laughs> preach, boy. Uh, <laughs> And so uh, I think we get a better, more well-rounded yeah. perspective. You know, yeah. We need to yeah. listen to, to, to what is, is the medical world is, is saying, but we also need to have our ear tuned to the Holy Spirit and in, yeah. in, in the scriptures yeah. and, and hearing what God's speaking into because his word is still alive. Yeah. You know, it's not like, oh, God wasn't planning on a pandemic. He didn't know this was coming or right. this could happen. Yeah. And so yep. he's scrambling. Nope, his word is still true. Yeah. It's still his, his, he's still putting his breath on his word and making it yeah. come alive to us in this season that we're in. So I think um, just leaning into the tension, that's how we're, we've been uh, kind of navigating it. Yeah, yeah. I, think, uh, I think it was Andy Stanley that talked about like being able to know the difference between whether it's a, I forget how he said it, like it's a problem to eradicate or it's a tension to manage. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really good. He definitely probably said that. He said, <laughs> <laughs> like I've always said, you've got to figure. No, but I think that like that's exactly what you're getting at. We instinctively want to eliminate the tension. Yeah, yeah. And that's easy to live that way. Yeah. Which is synonymous with living in a vacuum. Yep. Which is synonymous with living, you know, again, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, outside of diverse thinking. Yep. That's, it's, it's easier that way. There's no mess there where Jesus calls us into the mess. It's to be managed. That's, that's yeah. great. So, okay, in one way that we are definitely different is that, again, like I've got a child on the way, maybe here. Who knows? Thanks. Send me some presents. Um, but 
<laughs> Lots of diapers. <laughs> Presents. <laughs> diapers. <laughs> um, you've got three kids. Schools close up. Yeah, this is this was the that was the dagger. Okay, take us take us there. Uh, because you know, and Elizabeth and I were thinking, oh, you know, like we can't do large groups, you know. And then it was like, you know, we can't do any kind of groups. Yeah. Um, but you know, at least our, we're gonna have like a normal life. We're in Elizabeth. I'm thinking maybe we're gonna get more time together, right. you know. And I'll be working from home. And yeah, that you know, sounds and, really and, nice. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the school was like, you know, just to let you know, your kids are gonna be home, and yeah. you're going to school them. Right. Um, and you know, I think for Elizabeth, she'd always wondered, you know, like I wonder what homeschool would be like. And um, it turns out we, no, we, <laughs> we don't really like it, yeah. you know. Okay. Uh, we really love our kids, um, but you know, some days we find we don't like them that much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a joke, kids. Well, and and the homeschool uh, moms and and parents, you know, of my church are like that have been doing this. They're like, ah, like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it, I, I will say, um, it's been. It's been interesting because we want to include our kids in this as well, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so we just had to be honest with them at some level because our kids, you know, they're uh, old enough to understand and comprehend. Um, unlike, you know, your kids aren't as educated yet. Yep. Uh, okay. Just, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a newborn. No, we're joke. really great friends. That's a bad joke. Uh, <laughs> Stay on message. Stay on uh, message. Stay on message. Stay on message. Yes, um, we're trying to walk through this with them and, and kind of wrestle through this with them. And so I think you know we've just been including them in the conversations. They're like, "Hey, this is an adjustment," you know, and uh, yeah. you know, uh, like our oldest is a, a schedule like freak through and yeah. through. You know, so and so if you implement a strategy. Day one, yeah. he like expects, expects that it, yeah. yep. know, on day 21, which is yeah. like... And no, three days in, you're yeah. like, oh, we're not doing that No, anymore. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah, you definitely can't expect, you know, yeah. omelets every morning, yeah. Yeah. you know? Like, like, <laughs> like, day one of pandemic lockdown yeah. looks much different than now on day whatever we're at. Yeah, yeah. Is it Wednesday? Right. Is it Thursday? Is it yeah. Sunday? Is it yeah. Sunday again? <laughs> you know, we don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's definitely come into our house, and it's just... it's. We feel like flipped our family upside down, but I feel like it's also brought us closer in the sense that um, uh, we can be honest with our kids and say we don't have we don't have the answer. Yeah, we don't really know what this is going to bring. We don't know how the world's going to change. We don't know what it's going to look like. What normal's going to become on the other side? Right. Um, right. And and so um, you know, we've probably asked for a lot of forgiveness from our kids yeah. in this season. <laughs> yeah. For um, you know, I think it's brought a lot of frustration into our home, but also I think it'll be something we look back on and and remember and and cherish. Now uh, we have kids, like you said, but yep. um, and you may or may not have a baby. Um, yeah, it's very speculative during, <laughs> during the point of this video. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you're thinking about your pregnancy and and and, yeah. and, and having your first child, and then you know, pandemic comes in, and, and what's yeah. For you and Jackie, yeah, how's it having to man- yeah. navigating that? I think uh, I, you know, as with a lot of experiences like this, you see it on the screen, you see it on your your Facebook feed, and it's like I empathize with that, I, or I'm trying to empathize with that, but I just don't, you know, like again, like that yeah. it, full transparency, like that those first few days, cancel church. It was like. It's kind of nice. It's kind of a nice breather. This can't be that big of a deal. Yeah. Why is everyone? Maybe you've thought this. Like, what's the like big? And then when I started to you know get educated on things and realize, okay, my wife is a pregnant yeah. woman. Mm-hmm. It's technically considered higher risk. I mean, that was like, this is real. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I got my mask. You know, yeah. I'm standing outside of Target. Yeah. You know, 45 yeah. minutes before they open, legit to get my my hand mm-hmm. wipes. And then as I'm walking to get the hand wipes, I noticed someone was trying to walk there a little bit faster, power walking. I'm getting my hand wipes. You know, don't ever, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't ever judge people who are frantically <laughs> trying to get yeah. hand wipes yeah. until you're. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Side so, note: Has this changed like how we interact with people? Like, like. It has now become polite to like 
<laughs> or go the sidewalk for someone when they're walking J- by. Jackie and I were watching, I think, like an event- Avengers movie because we're working our way through all the Marvel movies, uh, and like someone like hugged on screen. Got, and, like, I, don't do it. It. <laughs> you know? I know it's like again very serious stuff. Okay, can we just please yeah. learn to laugh? Okay, yeah. so so for me it got really serious, and it was like all right, like because now and this is huge. This is huge. I think this is one thing we got to take from this season is like, I had to stop thinking of how this is going to impact me if I got sick. And I had to go into, this isn't about me. Yeah. This is about yeah. how me could affect her, could affect so my heir, my son. And so that was the game changer for me where it was like, it got, it definitely, again, like, I'm in tune. I will say that I certainly felt some anxiety because I'm like, you know, I know we joke about it, but you get an itch in your throat and you're like, Rona, yeah, you know, oh, 100%, like yep. I, I find I found morning. myself, you know, at times this is now three weeks ago. So I know it wasn't. But like, I remember we were talking, we were talking. I was like, dude, do you ever think you're come like you have a fever? Like, I'm like. I feel like, you know, and it's like you start having like almost this placebo effect of like, do do I? Mm -hmm. And so that brought it, you know, real time for me. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I was thankful for that. Like it certainly created a little bit uh, more natural anxiety because you're just thinking about how this is going to impact my wife and my son. But it was also how God got me in tune with other people. Where at first, it probably would have been easier for me to go, what's the big deal? And then it was like, well, I guess it will depend on what their deal is. Yep. Um, I think you bring up a good point in that uh, this, uh, like... This is why we have to live in the tension is because yeah, w- when we when we scoot to one side of the of what's actually happening or what we believe is actually happening and we believe that we're interpreting it the yeah. right way, yeah. we're not we become not loving people. Yeah, that's good. Right? Because right, right. like, oh, this isn't a big deal. I'm just gonna go out. Yeah, yeah. You know, um and, and that's not loving. Right. Um uh and so yeah, I think that's a really good point. I, I up, think this isn't about us. So I wanna be careful because I know I'm talking to your Church, and I want to, you know, not to overstep here, but I think that love sometimes makes it sometimes costs us our opinions. One hundred percent. Like I, I really do think. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me let me talk. Like I think I think that in loving Jesus and loving others, there are times where it's just like I feel really strongly about this. But if I hold to that, I'm not going to be able to love them. Yep. And that's what God's called me yeah. to do. All right, so let, let's kind of start landing the plane here. Um, where, do we, where do we go from here? Um, <laughs> you know, like, let me ask you this. So, like, as the pastor of your church, the Mixers. Uh, <laughs> mix on. <laughs> mix, mix off. off. Uh, <laughs> Did we just finish each other's sentence? Anyways, what do you hope? What's your hope for mixed church? What What's your hope? You know, for the people that God has, you know, uh, privileged you to be a voice in their lives. Yeah. What do you hope they either, you know, I don't know how we want to say it, take, take from away. this season, yeah. learn. You know, uh, uh, how do we want to be changed out of this season? Yeah. Uh, so I'm hearing a couple questions. Where do we go and what do we take away? Yeah. And so I think where do we where do we go is an interesting question in that uh, one, I think we're not going back to normal. Yeah. I think Elizabeth yeah. and I, one of the things good. we were talking about is like I'm way more aware and conscious now <laughs> like yeah. how fast germs can spread. Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah. Uh, and so not that that's what we take away from all of right. this. Right. Um, but we're not going back to the way it used to be. And I think, uh, you know, one of the things that's been really fun for us, and maybe I should, as some of our staff is sitting here, I don't know if this has been fun for everyone, you know, but, but it's been fun for us to try new things and, yeah. and, and push our, stretch our abilities and, and push the envelope of what we're used to and uh, to doing. Because we were, we were in a rhythm. We, we, we knew how to do a, a good Sunday service experience and, um, and we, we were seasoned in that, but this was like, whoa, we're yeah. way outside of our yeah. comfort zones. Yeah. And so I think, uh, where do where do we go from here? I think we we're going to keep leaning into that. We're yeah. going to keep, you know, trying. And I, yep. I think because uh, 
we know also that there's, a, there's another generation of, of unchurched people growing up in our city right now that the church is going to have to adapt for. Yeah. And so yeah. I think this is a really good season for us because we're forced to adapt right now. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. so, and so we're priming ourselves to adapt again when, yeah. when b- before we lose um, either our tone with the next generation yeah. or our, yep. our style with yeah. the next generation. Yep. Um, and so I think we're going to continue to lean into that. What do I want you to take away, though, is, is how important, I think, I think what I would want people to take away is how important our relationships yeah, are. Yeah, for sure. You know, because I, uh, like, like I said earlier, this has just reminded me how much I love people. Yeah. And need people to actually thrive in my relationship yeah. with God. Uh, and so uh, I think a lot of us are feeling, you know, we, we would joke and likely about what are the first things you're going to do, you know, when you, yeah. when, you get, when, yeah. when the world is back open, yeah. you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but really like I'm going to hug some people, yeah, right. you know, um, and, and I think uh, in church we can often um, become really critical people, yeah. like, you know, I, yeah. I just wish, you know, I wish Brave Church would do more, you know, whatever. I think that's the you know. first time you have ever done a a vocal impression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. That was like disgruntled churchgoer. I don't know, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> right, I know what you're uh, but saying. But we can become we can. so we, You and I are the same way. we just attack, we poke, and we criticize. It's and, harder and so for you easily. and me because we lead churches. 100%. Like, I think this is, you know, we can empathize with every single person that has criticized how we are doing this, doing this right yeah. now, how we're doing church. We can get that because literally every time we walk into another person's church, all I we feel, see is... Yeah. Mm, Eh, mm, well, yeah. I wonder when they're doing that. Except yeah. for when See, I came that's to the mix. That church. is the disgruntled church voice. You did the same voice. <laughs> <I did. laughs> but I, no, I, I can. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think the takeaway is is like yeah, we have opinions about all these things, but at our at the core of who we are is us. Yeah. And we man. really love each other yeah. because when we, since we've been removed, like yeah. all I'm hearing is, man, I miss you and I want to hug you My and I want right. to see you and sit down with your children. And I, yeah. I just, I, I cherish you. And so the takeaway is this is so much bigger and so much more important, I think, than we, uh, than we realized before. Yeah. You know, yeah. So the new normal is, I, what I hope the new normal is, is a place, where, yeah, where we keep innovating, but where we remember how special our relationships yeah. really are, you know? Yeah. I don't know if, you, if, if you're... No, I, I'm, I mean, honestly, that, that's pretty much uh, what I would want for our church as, as a brave church. It's what I want for my family. Yeah. Um, it, it's what I think, I think our city needs that. You know, uh, I'm going to plug Andy Stanley once again. He should give me royalties on this stuff. But like he, he talks about, you know, the mission always stays the same. The model changes. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I think the way that he says is, marry your mission, date the your model is a weird way. But like we're the mission to reach <laughs> yes, our city and that, reach yeah. people for Jesus. That's it. That's like literally it, you say it one way, I say it one way. Like ours is meet Jesus, help people move forward in the life they're meant mm-hmm. to live. It literally is the exact same thing as Jesus saying, going on in all the world and make disciples. Yep. Exact same thing. Same mission. But our model is gonna change and it should change out of this. I think one thing that has been amazing, we were talking about this earlier, how this season has thrown us into obviously a a season of uncertainty, things are rapidly changing, but it there's like this silver lining of you can try anything right yeah. now and no one's gonna blink. Like no one, like For you sure. don't have to, to, to have a vision meeting for your church yep. and say, hey, guess what, church? Next weekend. It's like, no, you just do. Yep. <laughs> you just, yeah. And I, I think, was telling you earlier, we've like, We've done this four or five weeks now, and every week we've had different service times. <laughs> yeah. Like we haven't done it right. once. Right. And no same. one's yeah. like, you're not getting emails about yeah, it. Like, yeah. it's just like, and I think that there, that, that sense of freedom, I, I think bits and pieces of it, right? Like, we yeah. obviously are, are, we're going to go back to some more what uh, of a routine out of this, mm-hmm. but there's a new attitude of, to take off the pressure, like, yeah. to tr- let's, let's stay, let's continue to advance the kingdom of God in any way that we, we yeah. possibly yeah. can. I think the other thing that you hit on, and I just want to emphasize it, and I'm going to say this because we're in the sermon series that this conversation is a part of, but it's like, it's getting back to the essentials, yeah. like what we deem as essential in our lives and relationship. Yeah. Like, it's, it's having conversations. It's yeah. realizing that, like, my goodness, like, yes, it's a, differences are annoying, differences create frustration, and yet I believe that, like, we're starting to see 
that not not just that they're not that big of a deal, but like mm -hmm. it is what makes our love so beautiful. Like you're, you know, opposites attract, like type deal. Like Jackie, you and me, right? Like Jackie and I, <laughs> and I, I don't know. You have to speak for you and Elizabeth, mm -hmm. Beth. Can I call her Beth? No, you can't. You call and her B. Beth. <laughs> B. B's good. Yeah. <laughs> like. Jackie and I don't love each other because we are the same. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, like, I love Jackie because she is completely different from me. Mm -hmm. And Jackie, I guess, loves me in a very strange way because <laughs> I'm different than her. Um, one of us is, is more of a charity type love. Like, I desperately need her and I need her to be different mm -hmm. for me. Man, if we can come out of this season as a church and go, I... It's weird that you think so yeah. differently, but there's a part of that that I need to yeah. more fully, like you said, I love that. When you're in the middle, you get you get both sides. Yeah. You get a f more full uh, perspective. Yeah. I think there'll be things that we actually look back on this season and go, I'm thankful for this because yeah. blank. You know, if you were answering that question, like, you know, I, we're, we're a couple of years down the road yeah. remembering this. What do you think you're going to be most thankful for having gone through this season? Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing is, is that it has, for me personally, just, and I already knew this, but just the incredible support and community that I'm already a part of, yep. you know, within Brave Church. To and Mixed Church and, you know, yeah, it makes our amazing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Ho you know. If you let me get there, <laughs> if you'd let me get there, I'd talk about it. Uh, within a brave church, I mean, number one, like the people within our community, and I'm sure you've gotten the same, like checking in on me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I'll just be honest, like some of the Facebook messages that I've gotten from y'all, like, hey, like you're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much for leading our church this way. Thank you for saying that, because I want you to know, I was not feeling that way that day. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm sure you have felt yeah, this way. Like, can we be, su percent, let's yeah. go super candid for a second. Like, it's our job as pastors to lead, like Moses. Like, mm -hmm. he's out there like, stay calm. It's going to be I, good. Yeah, I know. And then in the next conversation, he's getting real with God, and God's like, dude, what are you crying about? Tell them to move forward. Like, so on one half, like, we have to be bold for our church. But on a very human level, we're going... I don't know if I'm I doing know. this right. It's like every time someone was like, these are unprecedented times. We've never been yeah. in this in all of human history. And I'm thinking, and I have to leave. Yeah. Like, like, well, why me? I, I yeah. didn't understand yeah. the precedented times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was still trying yeah. to figure yeah. those times out. Yeah, that's funny. And so, like, just realizing the love from our community, but then also friendship. Like, yeah. our friendship, the friendship that I have with other pastors. Um, the last thing that I'll say, and then I'd love to ask the same thing for you, and then I know we'll, we'll wrap up and I'll let you do so, seeing as we're in your house, your house, your rules. But, like, I, for me, the opportunity that Jackie and I have had, I mean, yes, it has been trying to be at home with each other more than we are typically used to. We've mm -hmm. had to discover, you know, I think that uh, I saw a video with Rich Wilkerson. I think he was saying this, or maybe it was uh, Carl Lenz, where he's like, you know, you're at home. Like, doesn't mean you have to talk all day long. Like, you can still keep some like, yeah. hey, I'm going to go into work mode. So we've had to discover that. And yet it has been a sweet time as we get ready to become parents to where it's just like, hey, this is our last like moment together. I, I would have missed that if Jackie would have not pointed it out. And I, yeah. I mentioned this in my message last week. Like, I went into this situation where like, how do we, you know, what is there to be learned? <laughs> and and what you know what in the, and and Jackie's like, just be. This here. was huge. Like Jackie was like, there's something just here to be experienced. Yeah, that's good. Let me say this. Like, we so often go through life and how is this going to impact the future? Mm -hmm. There are certain experiences that are just here, like for like it's just right now. It's just supposed to be sweet right now. Yeah. It's literally, you know, and I'm sure God is working all things out to good, right? But like, He just wants us to like, what's there to be right here that just, hey, man, thank you, God. Yes. What about you? What give me just a couple things and then, and then, um, we'll, then we'll move on. We'll we'll wrap it up. I think I'm going to be thankful for what this has revealed. Um, uh, I said last week in my message, it's just fresh in my mind still because it's my life right now, yeah. is that 
Um, I think we often think that like this is a storm and the storm is attacking us, but more than attacking us, I think it's revealing the weakness that we already have. And so yeah. I think I'm going to be thankful for the weakness in me. It's exposed. That's good. That's good. Um, because uh, like anything, you know, Elizabeth and I talk about this all the time. When we look back on our last 10 years of marriage, what we don't often see is like a highlight reel. We see like the real painful moments, yeah. the real stretching yep. times. Yeah. Because on the other side of those moments are incredible joy, yeah. you know, our incredible good. strength. And so I think we'll look back on this and be thankful for as crazy as it's been, as yeah. challenging as it's been, it, what it's revealed, the the error and the weakness and the, and the, and the bad thought patterns and yeah. the bad perspectives yep, that good. we've had, um, the storm has kind of revealed those weaknesses and we're shoring them up. And so I'll be thankful for that. Yeah, that's good. Well, how would you, again, your house, your rules, which again, by the way, like, I just want y'all to, like, we talk a ton about church unity and we need church unity. I'm just going to be honest for a real second. Like, it's already happened, y'all. Like, it is legit happening because, yeah. like, at least I can say that we're experiencing this together. Our churches are literally 15 minutes away mm-hmm. from each other. Yep. Like, you've never once been concerned about, no. oh, I don't know if someone's going <laughs> to. That's my impersonation of you. <laughs> so, Why am I a disgruntled so churchgoer? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I won't do that again. But it's just okay. true, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you've literally never once been like, oh, yeah. like, you, you, as soon as this went down, you were like, do you want to, like... I asked you before I asked my team. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jake, you want to record in our space yeah. knowing, like, these guys are going to have li- to run it I was, I was at my house on the floor. Like, I bought this really expensive piece of, like, equipment. I'm like, okay, I plug this in. And I, I, I think, can you see me? Can, what, can I'm, like, yeah. trying to yeah. visualize. This You're calling like, your dad to figure out how to use the technology. Yeah, yeah, and, and you oh, reached out. Fair. Boom, hey, come... Yeah. You know, I'm only going to charge you so much. I'm kidding. He's not charging us at all. So, like, that is, man, again, like, the unity that's yeah. already happening. Yep. And so um, you've blessed us. On behalf of Brave Church, we're thankful for you, for your entire media team. Oh, I see them doing They're going, wrap it up. Um, but so thankful for yep. you guys. We are, I know for me, I couldn't be more privileged to reach our city with you. Together. We're in it together, man. We are Nicks, in it together. Nick's. Well, hey, we love you, church. Yeah. Both churches. Um, and uh, we can't wait, obviously, to be back together with you real yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like soon in the sense that Jesus said soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I'll, I'm coming back soon. <laughs> I was, I, this was a sad conversation. I was talking with a guy, and he's like, well, we just hope that it ends. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for joining us. We love you. We will see you next Sunday at our respective churches. (laughs) God bless. (laughs) Well, I hope that you enjoyed that conversation half as much as I enjoyed it when I had it with Jonathan Strobush. Uh, Obviously, we tackled a lot of different sides of the COVID-19 situation. However, there's one thing I hope that that you got out of this, and and it's this, is the importance of connection and community and having conversations during this time. More than ever, we need each other. We've got to keep communication uh, open, and we've got to to stay connected. And with that, I want to give another plug to our online community groups that are open and ready for you to sign up right now. We've got a men's prayer group. We've got a women's prayer group. We've got like a family-oriented uh, group. We've got uh, a mixed group. Anyone can join that group. They're on all different times and dates um, out of the, the week on a weekly schedule. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't signed up yet, sign up for an online community group right now. If you can't make all of them, that's totally cool, but don't rob yourself of the entire experience just because you you can't stay consistent with it. Uh, lastly, I want to give you an opportunity to respond uh, to the generosity of our God by expressing some generosity yourself uh, through our weekly tithe and offering. Again, if this is your first time watching Brave Church, there's no expectation on our behalf that you give. But for those of us who call Brave Church home, we, we really believe this is a privilege to give. It's, a, it's an honor to uh, mirror the generosity of our God. And again, I want to just thank you so much 
um, for being who you are and being generous during this very trying season. Uh, again, every single week that we're not at Milwaukee Lutheran, we are uh, reinvesting uh, those funds into our city um, through our strategic partners. And we've also got a COVID-19 fund that you can give directly to. 100% of that money is going to go uh, towards helping people who have been personally impacted by COVID-19. Just this last week, we sent out uh, hundreds of dollars in the form of grocery store gift cards to people who have um, been furloughed or lost their job and, and don't have really any certain uh, certainty when it comes to their financial picture moving forward. And so again, thank you for doing what you do because you really make the way for Brave Church to impact our city. Well, as you'll notice, there's a spot right here open and I'd like to address that. Um, uh, obviously, uh, y'all have seen the thousands of pictures and videos that I've been posting, but I wanted to introduce you uh, to a very, very special person that we just met a week ago. Y'all, uh, this is, who is this, Jacqueline? This is Ezra James. Ezra James Worth, he was born last Sunday. Monday. Monday, wow, I'm gonna need to get that right. Monday at six, uh, uh, about 6 a.m. in the morning, eight pounds, seven ounces, a little chunker, takes after his daddy, but we are so blessed uh, to have him and uh, you know we're we're growing brave church one person at a time literally um, but welcome Ezra James worth love him. all right sign up for a community group thanks again for watching we'll see you next Sunday